Hello and welcome to Current News. My name is Neil. In this special segment, we will discuss news which is important from the perspective of your exam. The bulletin of the last whole week which might echo in your question paper in the exam hall. First, let's begin with the headlines. Supreme Court seeks central government's reply on the petition filed against NGT's order. Water purifiers banned in places with low TDS. NGT's order challenged in the apex court. Turkey threatens to use Montreux Convention after Russia invades Ukraine. Turkey may close the Bosphorus and Dardanelles Straits. It aims at stopping Russian warships movement. Economic experts forecast increase in wheat exports from India amid Russia-Ukraine war. Russia currently leads in world in wheat exports. India's share in current global wheat exports is less than 1%. A payload of Chandrayaan mission 2 detects solar proton event, the event likely to increase radiation in space, coronal mass ejections detected by payload last month. An international conference on Indian temple architecture inaugurated, features of the major South Indian temples discussed in the conference, several temples built in the Deccan's Plateau region between 11th and 14th century AD. Let's begin with news of the week. The Supreme Court has issued notice to the central government on a petition filed against the National Green Tribunal's order. In addition, the Apex Court has also stayed the tribunal's order for the time being. NGT has issued an order to the Central Pollution Control Board during the last year. In this order, the Pollution Control Board was directed to instruct RO manufacturers for prohibiting the installation of water purifiers at places where the level of TDS, that is total dissolved solids in water, is less than 500 mg per litre. The NGT's order came after an expert committee's report. The report stated that if the TDS in water is less than 500 mg per litre, then the RO system will not be useful because it will remove important minerals along with non-essential salts from the water. Besides, it will also lead to undue wastage of water. In addition, the NGT had also been ordered to promote awareness among the common public about the ill effects of water devoid of minerals. A petition was filed in the Supreme Court by Water Quality India Association challenging the NGT's order. The association had appealed in the Apex Court for protecting the economic interests of the RO manufacturers. Now, the Apex Court has directed the concerned ministries of the central government to provide their response in this regard within three weeks. RO makes water portable by reducing tedious substances such as chemicals, viruses, bacteria and salts. But RO also filters out important minerals along with non-essential salts from the water. By consuming the water filtered by RO, a deficiency of several essential minerals in the human body and many health-related problems arise. TDS refers to the concentration of total dissolved particles or solids in water. It contains inorganic salts like calcium, magnesium, chloride, sulfates, bicarbonates, etc., which are easily soluble in water. Its excessive presence makes the water impure or hard and unfit for human consumption. Low TDS places are those places where minerals like calcium, magnesium and zinc are either absent or are found in very small quantities in the water. Amidst Russia's invasion of Ukraine, several countries are imposing sanctions on Russia. Now, Turkey is also planning to do the same. Turkey has threatened that it may close its strategic straits for the stopping of the movement of Russian warships. These two straits are the Bosphorus and the Dardanelles Strait. It is being believed that Turkey will soon use the Montreux Convention for closing these straits so that Russian ships cannot reach the Black Sea via the Mediterranean Sea. The Dardanelles Strait connects the Aegean Sea, a part of eastern Mediterranean, to the Sea of Marmara. To the northeast of Marmara is the Bosphorus Strait, which connects it with the Black Sea. The Bosphorus Strait lies in Istanbul, Turkey. The Bosphorus Strait separates the Asian and European parts of Istanbul. Both straits are also very crucial in terms of trade because oil produced in Russia and Azerbaijan is exported to Europe through this route. 
It was decided in Montrex Convention 1936 that these two routes would be under Turkey's control. This treaty was signed by same member countries who had signed the Treaty of Lausanne 1923. Under the agreement, Turkey has been conferred powers to make rules on the movement of naval ships passing through these straits. Turkey has also the right to stop the ship movements of countries involved in any conflict in case the need of doing so arises. However, the countries located adjacent to the Black Sea have been provided an exemption in the agreement. If a ship of a country located adjacent to Black Sea is outside the Mediterranean Sea before the ban, then it can use this passage to return to its base. Economic experts are viewing agricultural export opportunities for India amidst the ongoing Russia-Ukraine war. At present, Russia is leading wheat exporting country of the world and India is not even in the top 10 wheat exporting countries of the world. Russia exports 18% of the total international wheat exports. The European Union is the largest wheat producer of the world but China, India and Russia are respectively the first, second and third largest wheat producing countries of the world. The position of China and India has remained the same for last five years in the country category. Russia, America, Canada and France are the top four wheat exporting countries of the world. The question remains that why Russia and America are ahead in wheat exports despite producing much less wheat than China and India. The main reason is that there are temperate grasslands in Russia and America. There are steppes plains in Russia and prairies plains in America which are suitable for producing good quality wheat. On the other hand, the consumption of wheat in China and India is very high as these countries are highly populated. India's share in global wheat exports is less than 1%. At the same time, wheat export is about 10% of the total exports from India. India used to export only 15 million tons wheat in 2016, but wheat export has increased to about 250 million tons in 2021. Bangladesh, Nepal, UAE and Sri Lanka are the largest importers of Indian wheat. Egypt, which is going through a financial crisis, has now resorted to the Suez Canal for increasing its income. The Egyptian government has increased transit fees on ships passing through the Suez Canal. Besides, the matter of widening the canal's southern end has also come to the fore. The 120 miles long Suez Canal connecting the Mediterranean Sea to the Red Sea is one of the busiest routes of the world. The English Channel of the North Atlantic Ocean is the busiest shipping route in the world. The second busiest shipping route is the Strait of Malacca, which provides the shortest route between the Pacific and the Indian Ocean. The third busiest shipping route is Panama Canal, which connects the Pacific and the Atlantic Oceans. Panama Canal is followed by the Suez Canal and the Strait of Hormuz in terms of occupancy. About 10% of the global trade is carried out through the Suez Canal. The canal provides the shortest route for trade to Asian and European countries by reducing the distance up to 7,000 kilometers. Suez Canal's construction was officially started in 1859 and it was completed in 1869. The canal was opened in November 1869. Former President Abdel Nasir rationalized the canal in 1956 and he closed the Strait of Tehran. The UK, France and Israel jointly attacked Egypt after Nasir's decision of closing the Strait of Tehran. However, the matter was later resolved under the United Nations leadership. The idea of connecting the Mediterranean Sea and the Red Sea was not introduced for the first time in the 19th century. The idea for connecting these two seas was first conceived by Pharaoh Senusret III, who was the ruler of Egypt between 1887 and 1849 BC. It was conceived that Nile River will be used for connecting these two seas. IPCC, that is Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, has released the second part of its sixth assessment report. The report's second part is titled Climate Change 2022 Impacts, Adaptation and Vulnerability and it has been prepared by IPCC Working Group 2nd. The report's second part deals with the impacts, risks and adaptation measures of climate change. The report also reviews the limits of vulnerabilities and capabilities of nature and human society in adapting to climate change. Besides, the report's special feature is 
that during its preparation, the assessment has been carried out at the regional level for the first time by the working group. The report also issues some warnings for India. The report mentions that India is one of the most vulnerable countries of the world in terms of population affected by rising sea levels. If India does not cut its emission in time, then the habitat conditions in India will become worse due to increase in heat waves, humidity and sea level etc. If India's emissions continue to increase at this rate, then due to rise in sea levels, about 35 million Indians will face annual coastal flooding by the middle of this century. As its outcome, both life and property will have to suffer heavy loss. In addition, increasing heat waves in Indian cities will also have a negative impact on air pollution, urban transport, air hygiene and infrastructure etc. The report also mentions that the increasing population in Indian cities will be affected the most by climate change. Besides, the report raises concerns regarding the wet bulb temperature. The report mentions that if the emissions are not reduced, then common life will be badly affected due to increase in the wet bulb temperature. Wet bulb temperature is a state of equilibrium between heat and humidity. It is the minimum temperature at which atmospheric air can be cooled by evaporation of water. With the increase in temperature, the equilibrium of heat and humidity will be disturbed and the atmospheric air will not be able to cool down and it will threaten the existence of human life. Three working groups have contributed in the sixth assessment report. The report's first part was released by Working Group 1 in 2021. The report's third part is likely to be released by the Working Group 3rd in April 2022. IPCC's fifth report was released in 2014. The Government of India has finally issued new guidelines for brick kilns. The government has made changes in the Environmental Protection Rules 1986 for curbing pollution caused by the brick kilns. The rules emphasize on using PNG as a fuel in brick kilns. Besides, only brick kilns based on zigzag technique and the vertical soft technique will be permitted from now onwards. In addition, work will be carried out for converting the existing kilns to similar techniques. In addition, the limit of particulate matter emission from the brick kilns has also been fixed now. The brick kilns will be allowed to emit a maximum of 250 mgpm per nm3, that is, normal cubic meter from now onwards. The rules further state that all brick kilns will be allowed to use only fuels such as PNG, coal, firewood, or agricultural waste. On the other hand, burning peat coal, tires, plastic, and hazardous waste has been banned. If large number of brick kilns are situated in any area, then a new kiln will be established outside 1 km radius. The new rules include making bricks from ash in the same brick kilns from where the ash is being generated. In the zigzag pattern of brick kilns, the bricks are placed in such a way that the hot air has to take a longer route. On the contrary, the bricks are placed in the straight line in the traditional kilns. Heat transfer to bricks can be improved in the zigzag pattern. In the whole process, 20% less coal is used than the traditional kilns. Eight smooth-coated otters have been identified recently near Mukumbu Dam in Tiruchirappalli, Tamil Nadu. They have been identified during the search for migratory stork. Smooth-coated otters are freshwater and fish-preying animals and they have been seen in the Kaveri River catchment area after several years. Their numbers have declined drastically in recent years due to drying up of river beds in the Kaveri Delta region and excessive fishing by humans in the region. Besides, smooth-coated otters have also been illegally hunted for their skin. Smooth-coated otters are listed as vulnerable in the IUCN Red List. They are usually found in the shallow and calm water sites such as wetlands, seasonal swamp sites, rivers, lakes, etc. They are active both at night and during the day and they are good swimmers also. They play a pivotal role in controlling the number of fishes in rivers and reservoirs. They are called Neer Nai in Tamil which means aquatic dog. In addition, smooth-coated otters are also type of indicative species. Actually, they are creatures which live in clean and fresh water. Therefore, their number or presence near an aquatic body also shows the level of cleanliness or pollution in that water body. Smooth-coated otters are seen in India in the Himalayas, Western Ghats, Northeast and most parts of South India. Besides, 
Out of the 13 species of otters found around the world, two additional species of otters are found in India. These two species of otters are Eurasian otter and the small clawed otter. CLASS or CLASS, a payload of Chandrayaan-2 orbiter has detected solar proton event in the space recently. It can pose excessive radiation threat for humans in space. CLASS stands for Chandrayaan-2 Large Area Soft X-ray Spectrometer. The same payload has also detected the phenomena of coronal mass ejections during the last month. The solar proton event was also detected by Geostationary Operational Environmental Satellite of the US Space Agency, NASA. But NASA's satellite could not detect the phenomena of coronal mass ejections. Solar flares or solar flames emanating from Sun sometimes emit highly energetic particles in the interplanetary space. The emission event of these highly energetic particles is called solar particle event. Since these highly energetic particles are mostly protons, the phenomena is also called solar proton event. Due to these particles, not only radiation increases in space, but also ions or charged particles spread in the Earth's middle atmosphere. Besides, these energetic particles or protons pose radiation hazard to spacecrafts and astronauts. In addition, solar flares linked to coronal mass ejections produce geomagnetic storms. It causes major changes in the magnetic field and plasma of the Earth's magnetosphere. Solar flares are high-speed magnetic plasma radiation emitting from the sun's surface. It originates when magnetic energy is released from the sun spots. Whereas, the largest solar storms that result from these conditions are called coronal mass ejections. In coronal mass ejections, about 1 billion tons of plasma from the sun comes to the earth along with solar winds. Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology, Government of India has recently announced the national strategy on additive manufacturing. The strategy aims at increasing India's share in the global additive manufacturing to 5% within next three years. Besides, India has to fulfill some targets by 2025. These targets include developing 50 indigenous technologies for additive manufacturing related building materials, machines, softwares, etc., creating 100 new startups and 500 new products in additive manufacturing, as well as training about 1 lakh new skilled workers in additive manufacturing. Additive manufacturing is also known as 3D printing. Unlike conventional manufacturing methods, in 3D printing, new objects are created by layering the required building materials layer by layer. Since in 3D printing, different layers of the building material are not trimmed but added, hence such manufacturing is called additive manufacturing. In additive manufacturing, powders of materials like plastics, ceramics, fibers, metals are converted into 3D objects by layering method. For doing so, first of all, the object's digital model is prepared by computer-aided designing software. A 3D printer then uses additive processes for creating the 3D object from the computer-aided design file. In additive processes, successive layers of the required material are layered on top of each other until the object is created. Additive manufacturing or 3D printing enables to create objects with complex shapes using less material than conventional manufacturing methods. Although additive manufacturing or 3D printing has been used mainly for prototyping till now, but still it has also been used for successfully manufacturing prosthesis such as stents and dental crowns, various consumer goods like food, clothing, medicines, glass products and automobile products. Additive manufacturing can be viewed as the next generation of digital manufacturing. It deals with newly emerging areas like computing, electronics and artificial intelligence. Hence, new opportunities for intellectual property rights and exports are likely to be created in additive manufacturing as well as new startups are also likely to be established in this sector. In the midst of Russia-Ukraine war, there have been massive cyber attacks in both countries. Russia has blocked access to many foreign social media platforms so that false information cannot be disseminated among its citizens. The demand for virtual private network has highly increased among the people in view of these cyber attacks. Individuals or corporates can create their own private network by using VPN. Online privacy can be ensured in the private network. 
In addition, the user's information is also not disclosed. Internet protocol, that is, IP address of the user, is secured in VPN. For example, when a company grows, it opens new branch offices. Therefore, a secured path is required to share important information from the head office to the branch offices or among the branch offices of the company. It is so because companies' crucial data should not be shared by using the public internet and it should not come under cyber attack. Companies use their VPN for avoiding cyber attacks. VPN used in the same office is called intranet while VPN used with business partners is called extranet. VPN serves as tunnel for connection between one's device and the internet. It means that one's information which used to go directly to the internet server will pass through the VPN now. In VPN, one's IP address will be secured and the information cannot be shared. For example, when one accesses one's banking app using a railway station's Wi-Fi hotspot, then the bank's important data is shared with that server. In such a situation, VPN provides one with a tunnel which is itself an encrypted link. These tunnels operate on certain protocols, PPTP, that is point-to-point -point tunneling protocol, SSL, that is secured sockets layer, and TLS, that is transport layer security, etc., are major protocol being used these days. Union Minister G. Kishan Reddy inaugurated an international conference on Indian temple architecture recently. The conference was titled Deva Yatnam, the special features of well-known Indian temples, especially South Indian temples, were discussed during the conference. In the conference held from 25th to 26th February 2022, the Union Minister also talked about Hoysala temples of Belur and Somnathpur. The government had sent a proposal to include these temples in the UNESCO heritage list this year. The Hoysala temple group is spread across the central part of Karnataka. The Hoysala rulers built many temples in the Deccan Plateau between 11th and 14th centuries AD. Among these temples are Chenna Keshava Temple at Belur, the Hoysaleshwar Temple at Halibid, and Keshav Temple at Somnath Puram are of special status. Besides, Belawadi, Amritpur, Hosa Holalu, and Nugehali temples are also part of Hoysala Temple Group. Although these temples are built in Hoysala style, but Chalukya style's influence can also be seen in these temples. Generally, these temples are dedicated to Lord Shiva and Vishnu, but other deities are also worshipped in some of these temples. In Belur's Chenna Keshava temple, there is a koot, that is, only one shrine in the temple. One can see Shalabhanjika idol in Chenna Keshava temple. Dvi koot, that is, two shrines in one temple, can be seen in Hoysaleshwara and Santaleshwara temples of Halibut. These temples are associated with Shaivism. Kedareshwara temple, which is famous for Trikut, is located at some distance from Hoysaleshwara temple. One can see Lakshmi Narayan, that is, Lord Vishnu and Lakshmi together, in the Halibut temples. In addition, all the three deities, that is, Shiva, Parvati, and Nandi, can also be seen together. Somnathpur temple is known for its star shaped viman. This temple is dedicated to Sri Krishna. Let us now look at five questions based on today's bulletin. The five questions based on this bulletin are as follows. Question 1. At present, some experts are of the view that there is an opportunity for India to increase its wheat exports. Which of the following factors may favour the above position? 1. Wheat's central pool is double as compared to the buffer. 2. Reduction in customs duty. 3. Use of hybrid seeds. And 4. Growing economic sanctions on Russia during the Russia-Ukraine war. Select the correct answer using the code given below. A. 1, 2 and 3 only. B. 1, 3 and 4 only. C. 2, 3 and 4 only. Or D. All of the above. Next question. What are the advantages of zigzag technique based brick kiln as compared to the conventional brick kiln? 1. Ensuring longer time and heat for bricks to be ready. 2. Lower carbon emissions as compared to the conventional brick kiln. You have to select the correct statement with the help of the given options. A. 1 only. B. 2 only. C. Both 1 and 2. Or D. Neither 1 nor 2. Next question. Prominently in news, the Montrix Convention is related to A. 
Turkish control over the strategic water straits of the eastern Mediterranean. B. Conservation of selected wetlands in Ramsar sites. C. Agreement between Western countries for space waste disposal. Or D. A group aimed at reforestation in sub-Saharan Africa. Next question. Consider the following statements with reference to the Suez Canal. 1. The canal connects the Red Sea and the Mediterranean Sea. 2. The idea of directly connecting the Red Sea to the Mediterranean Sea was first mooted in the 19th century. You have to select the correct statements with the help of the given options. Options are A. 1 only B. 2 only C. Both 1 and 2 or D. Neither 1 nor 2 The fifth and last question is Consider the following statements with reference to the South Indian temples. 1. All temples of South India are built in the Dravidian style. 2. Hoysala temples are located in the western end of Kerala. 3. Lord Shiva and Parvati are not together in the same place of worship in any South Indian temple. Which of the above statements are correct? Options are A. 1 and 2 only B. 2 and 3 only C. 1 and 3 only or D. None of the above. So for the time being, that's all in this bulletin. Do not forget to like, share and subscribe this TIS Hindi, English and PCS YouTube channels. At the end, let us have a look at few more events of the last week in other news. Niti Aayog is planning to introduce a national gender index for tracing the gaps in gender equality and for measuring the progress made in this direction. It will aid Niti Aayog in taking policy decisions towards gender equality in India. The index will also serve as a tool for mapping the progress of the states and union territories on the prescribed gender metrics and bringing about positive reforms in the sector. Besides, the index will also be linked with Sustainable Development Goals related framework. Ministry of Education has recently launched Bhasha Certificate Selfie Campaign. In the campaign, people will have to upload a selfie with their certificates by writing the tag hashtag Bhasha Certificate Selfie from their social media accounts. In order to obtain this certificate, it is mandatory for people to pass a test by selecting their language on Bhasha Sangam mobile app. The campaign aims at promoting India's multilingualism and cultural diversity. It also aims at imparting basic communication skills of various Indian languages among the people. The campaign will also help in promoting the spirit of Ek Bharat Shreshth Bharat. Ek Bharat Shreshth Bharat initiative was launched in 2015 for promoting people-to-people -people connection between states and union territories. NSE Indices Limited has recently launched a new index, Nifty Transportation and Logistics Index. The index aims at tracking the portfolio performance of stocks that belong to core industries such as passenger vehicles, commercial vehicles, motorcycles, airlines, shipping and logistics, solution providers, etc. For this purpose, 30 largest stocks belonging to these industries will be selected on the basis of their six-month average free float market capitalization. The top sectors include automobiles, services and industrial manufacturing respectively in terms of sector-wise weightage in the index. The database for the index is April 1, 2005 and the base price is 1000 rupees. The central government has approved Immigration Visa Foreigners Registration Tracking Scheme's extension for a period up to March 31, 2026. The scheme deals with immigration, issuance of visa, registration of foreigners and tracking their activities in India, etc. The scheme aims at modernizing and upgrading immigration and visa services. After the scheme's launch, the number of visa and OCI cards issued has increased to about 64 lakhs by 2019. The average visa processing time since the scheme's launch has come down to around 3 days, which used to be between 15 to 30 days earlier. It has been recently revealed in an annual report compiled by the US Chambers of Commerce that India has improved its International Intellectual Property Score. Due to this, India is now ranked 43 out of 55 countries in the International Intellectual Property Index. The index evaluates the intellectual property infrastructure of economies on the basis of more than 50 indicators and the US has topped this year's index. Ukraine has recently filed an application in the International Court of Justice against its invasion by Russia. Ukraine has accused Russia of falsely claiming that the genocide incidents took place in Ukraine's Luhansk and Donstak Oblast. Since then, the Genocide Convention 1948 has once again been in the news. 
the genocide convention or the convention on the prevention and punishment of the crime of genocide is an international law that was codified for genocide related crimes genocide is a crime that involves the deliberate and systematic destruction of a group of people because of their ethnicity nationality religion or race government of tamil nadu has recently decided to establish india's first conservation reserve for dugong in the gulf of mannar Its establishment will help in conserving dugongs and increasing their dwindling population in India. Dugongs commonly known as sea cows are herbivorous mammals. They are found in more than 30 countries of the world and they can be seen in the Gulf of Mannar, Gulf of Kutch, Park Bay and Andaman and Nicobar Islands in India. Dugongs are included in the IUCN red list of vulnerable category. Besides, it has been included in schedule 1 of the Wildlife Protection Act 1972.